Hello, my name is Antero. I'm the new host in Bimi and Jimmy show. I'm working for free and I can totally handle this, so rest easy, Daniel and buddies. Just sit back and watch and get jealous because I have that sort of talent. Today we are playing a FPS racing game in Momento, released October 2011 by Digital Arrow, forged from Unreal Engine. Racing in FPS games goes way back and I have no clue of its origins. I myself got introduced to the strict jumping culture in Quake 3D Frag. So since FPS racing is nothing relatively new, what makes this one so special? Well, the trailer says it has both single and multiplayer game modes. This is certainly nothing new. It also claims to be a game with unrestricted movement. I can only assume that there's no gravity or any sense to acceleration. It also has various game modes. This is getting interesting. How many different ways could they possibly alter the concept of racing in different manners of gameplay? Well, there's collecting stunt points in Trackmania and collecting rings in Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's find out what's the big deal. Welcome to our now, I don't seem to be able to move. This is not something I'd expect from a game with unrestricted movement. So apparently I'm a patient with a condition which basically means the inexperience in the game itself. I should be getting healthier the better and more I play the game. That's all I could get out of the story, if we needed any in the first place. This tutorial is meant for people with no experience and whatsoever in FPS shooters. With due all respect, I do know how to look and walk around. I think you're accelerating my condition. Thank you for your concern anyways, Miss Anderson. Alright, so green means easy. Got it? Yellow is medium and red is a bloody tissue ripping pain in the ass. I like my beef medium, so let's just go with the one in the middle. Here's the biggest obstacle and challenge this game has to offer. Collecting blue energy marshmallows. The challenge lies in the fact that while driving the levels around illegally fast, you have to pay attention, find, and be patient enough to collect these things. Sorry, Bob, but that's not going to happen. <clears throat> Committing suicide is a crucial part of the gameplay. It's not very helpful tactic, but it's good to know anyways. Just putting it out there in case you're wondering why it's included in the tutorial. Well, this is one legitimate way to bid farewell to my condition. Well done. <laughs> well done killing yourself, you good for nothing. Now, this is getting complicated. Power-ups. Millions of them. I don't wanna get to know any of you, unfortunately. I pray to God I won't be needing you anywhere. Moving on to single player. And what do we have here? We got Blue Forest. Game mode. Time trial. Um, spear hunt. And that's it. Various game modes. Alright, here we go. Oh, no. yes, yes. First of all, the movement, regardless its unrestriction, is very wonky. Air control feels slow and unpredictable. Let's compare to the king of all games, Quake. This is the very essence of unrestricted movement. Compared to that, this feels like you're intoxicated and trying to aim your piss into the toilet bowl with not so great success. There's something weird about the acceleration as well. It's kinda hard to explain. Alright, so you're flying like this, then you hit an edge of a wall like this, then you wall jump, then you go like this, and then you go like this all of fucking sudden. Wall jumps is perhaps the only thing that they got right. It's easy to elevate heights and you can get even little creative thanks to that. What do you mean I can't wall jump with my forehead? In case you're familiar with rocket jumps, this white projectile thing does pretty much the same thing. It's also a major factor in gaining extra speed. Perhaps the most unique feature in this game is the slow motion. It's a lifesaver in most of the situations, but for me it's a necessity, because the aiming and frames per second rate isn't very smooth for me. And now that I mention, these graphics you see here are as low as you can go. The lack of things that you can configure it is just insulting. This is what the game looks like with max graphics, and here's the settings that I use. I don't know what this fancy texture effect is called, so basically even though the texture is two-dimensional, the effect makes it look like three-dimensional. 
is a traitorous open GL. I don't know. I call it baby killer. And it's a big shame that you can turn it off. In my side, it doesn't cope too well with a wide and open level design such as this. And yes, the level design. It's utter random nonsense. It's like you're playing Minecraft in a server full of kids building statues of Hitler with staircases all over it, with people climbing and reaching those black bricks over his mustache. I get the feeling of adventure inside a child's drawing. I can sometimes hear the whispers of wisdom resounding through these endless Splendor first-timer doodles. What the fuck is this? It's a fuck blizzard celebrating its reign on the apex of my penis! There's so many ways to complete these levels, as well as there is a lot of useless layout. There's lots of shit to bump into and little gaps to fall in through everywhere. When you're finally going fast, there's always something random and stupid getting in your way. What's up with all these pillars? There's so many of them and they're all over the place. If they're supposed to block my path, then make it a wall, damn it! There's nothing specific or special to achieve or learn in most of the levels. Okay, here's the only exception. Took me a while to get through there. And I learned that as long as I tap my jump key as fast and hard as I can, I can consider it done at some point. Other than that, the levels all seem the same, and it can get boring very fast. The linear indoor design in the tutorial was more to my liking. There's a clear layout and even some decent architecture included. I don't suppose it's too much off if I'd say that this game takes quite some influence from other games. When there's all sorts of special trick jumping techniques you can exploit in a game, there's eventually going to be a game mode for doing just that. And then the competitive side emerges its beautiful head out of the orifice. And perhaps that's what led people to produce this game. Unreal Engine isn't perhaps the best choice for this. As far as I know, Quake engines have always been the right champion in this kind of physics. In fact, this is the first time I have ever seen any kind of jumping acceleration in a game physics using Unreal Engine. In all conclusion, there's lots of room for improvement, but that's just my humble opinion. It was entertaining at best like for one hour, but then it got boring. Graphics and design are easy and lazy. I find the music very depressing. Sounds are, well, they're okay, but there should be more voice acting, such as... 2, 1, GO! Or maybe... No! <coughs> Why not even... You have missed a checkpoint, turn around and go find it, you loitering retard! So, out from 5 bimmies, I give it um, 1 bimmy and half jimmy. Feel free to try it out yourself, but would you rather download a free open source game like Sonotic, which has the same racing community, only it has more variation to it, physics are superior, graphics are actually graphics, and on top of it the game itself is a magnificent shooter. Or would you rather perhaps spend $10 for an incomplete and repetitive game like this? Well, it's your fucking move. No hard feelings, Unreal fans.